Budgeting? Yes. I thought so. That's what I always dreamed about when I was a little girl. I thought, I want to grow up and marry a boy that wants to budget with me. Mm. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I'm good, it started. <laughs> Hi, this is Gina. Welcome back to Tight Shit Mama. Today, I have a very special guest joining us, and it is my husband. His name is Dennis, and he's a financial advisor. And last week, I promised you that we were going to have a an episode talking about how to get your spouse on board with the baby steps. Dennis, thank you for joining us. Do you want to give us a little bit of your professional background? Sure. Um, I'm a financial planner. I work with families and individuals who are trying to make decisions about how to spend their money, how to save their money, and then also how to plan for the future. So help them invest as well. Okay, great. So um, it's the new year, and at the beginning of the new year, a lot of people are thinking about making changes. Mm -hmm. One of the changes for a lot of people is, hey, let's get out of debt. Mm -hmm. We found Dave Ramsey about, when do you think? Maybe. 18 months ago? Oh, two years ago. Yeah, but yeah. Two years ago, mm -hmm. we found Dave Ramsey. Um, how do you, f first of all, what are your opinions on the baby steps as a professional? Right. I think I think it's great to have a methodology that you follow. And I think the baby steps are where so many of us find ourselves. I think there's just this natural drift into places where we, we do accumulate too much debt and our habits aren't great and we just need to break the pattern. And I think the baby steps are a great way to see progress and, and make your way incrementally to a much better place financially. So let's just say that that's not coming across and mm -hmm. there's still one party that is not on board. Right. What, what could you say to that person? I think there, there's the baby steps that help you accomplish the goal. But the two of you sitting down and saying, what are we trying to accomplish? And start with that why. You know, mm -hmm. why are we doing this? Why are we making money in the first place? And then if you have a, a common goal and a common agreement, then you back into saying, all right, now these are the baby steps we could take to get there. Mm -hmm. If you don't have that reason why, it's hard to get anybody on board for anything. So I think that would be a great starting place. Mm -hmm. Right. Very good. How important is being debt-free to building wealth? You're dealing with um, high net worth families mm -hmm. and business owners, um, is being debt free a big roadblock to getting there? I think it's a roadblock in two ways. One, it's about the numbers. You know, it's hard to get ahead when you're still digging the hole. I mean, for, for many of us, we, we build a debt hole and then we keep digging. The first step is to stop digging. But also it's a mindset change. I just think it's so important to be debt free to start thinking abundantly. And once, once you get a taste of that feeling, it's really powerful. Mm -hmm. So I think if you can accomplish those first few baby steps and get to a place where you're, you're seeing that incremental progress, then suddenly your mindset changes and you start to think about the possibilities. And I think as a couple, that's a really important awakening to have. Mm -hmm. you're, you're both going on the same path, that's looking it. for the same goal. And I do think that is, um, that's a huge part of our marriage. We have a very... Um, specific giving goal that we're trying to reach in our marriage um, and that is kind of the carrot that we hold out there for ourselves that we're gonna hit this goal one day and giving is a is a big reward that you mm -hmm. get to you know it's not for us to keep it's for us to manage when we started budgeting and then we did download the every dollar app probably last January right. we got on board with that we again if you're new to my channel we still use the free one it works for us but you do have to stay on top of it so I am, you know, checking the bank every day and making sure that it reconciles with the app. So with that in mind, I have to stay on top of these things. Is there anything you can share with everyone that bugs you about me and our budgeting life? So as Gina became more enthusiastic about the Every Dollar app and tracking all of our purchases, I would start getting texts in the middle of the day saying, did you just spend $30 on gas at Wawa? Or did you just spend you know, $20 at the dry cleaners. And yes, I did, and I would, be, I would enter them in on the app. I got pretty good about entering them in, but at the same time, those are the things that just really weren't effective in pinging me on in the course of the day. It's just something where I said, listen, that can wait until the end of the day to reconcile. It's budgeting is not a minute by minute activity. It's, it has to be more spaced out or it becomes its own stressor. And that, that it was creating more stress 
than it was, than was necessary probably. Right. And I think again, that comes back to communication. Like he simply said to me like, Hey, don't bug me in the middle of the day with these, you know, $15 questions or where I went to lunch. And I, I was like, okay, I won't do that anymore. I'm sorry. And so we kind of got over that. Mm -hmm. And I think too, um, okay. So I have two, two things for you along those lines. Right. So I'm not the breadwinner clearly. So what do you say to the person that might be the breadwinner and they're like, listen, I make all the money. I'm going to go eat lunch or I'm going to go buy a coffee. Don't tell me where to spend every dime. Um, I think both if, if you're doing the baby steps and, and you know, there, we encounter plenty of breadwinners who are still in pretty deep debt. So if there's a debt situation still, then the person who is not the breadwinner maybe doing the budgeting is well within their grounds to say, listen, we don't have you know, room for a lot of going out and having lunches or a lot of uh, frivolity going on. But as you migrate through the baby steps, I do think it's important for um, each spouse to feel as though they have some discretion, that they, they have some way to make good decisions, that, there's, that it's not so much of a pinch that there aren't rewards along the way. Mm -hmm. So allowing for some discretion within the budget to say, you know, it's not not all of it that you can play with, but there's a piece each month that you can put in there. I think that's a pretty effective way to keep everyone on board throughout. Right, I do think so. And I don't know that we were great about rewarding ourselves always. No. Mm -mm. And in hindsight, I, I, I know that Dave Ramsey talks about being gazelle intense and stuff, but um, I know I was in a mom's club when I first had children and they would go to Chick-fil-A to play and maybe get a sandwich. And I would just never go because I would think, well, we don't have $5 in the budget for me to go to Chick-fil-A. In hindsight, I should have just gone. <laughs> you know? and, and it probably would have made it a lot more tolerable. You know, I mean, it's not like I'm going to you know the mall and I'm dropping a couple hundred bucks. It was Chick-fil-A, it was $5. Right. And I think we could have worked it into our budget a little bit better than what we did and right. you know. Well, and I also think I mean you can be gazelle intense, but a lot of times people are coming to the marriage or they're coming to, into their financial adulthood with a lot of baggage about how things have been spent in the past, of how they were raised and how they treated money and their relationship with money. We see it all the time. And I think some of that is you can carry that intensity a little bit too far. I mean, we just had a conversation a couple weeks ago where it's year end and we're making retirement plan contributions, doing our end of year, end of year charity, we're um, you know, moving money into college savings or all those things. And um, you know, your, your response was, we're hemorrhaging cash. Well, no, we're not hemorrhaging cash. We're doing what the cash is supposed to do, which is go into each of these buckets. But you're just looking at the checking your savings account declining there it's not spending, it's allocation, but that's that discipline, that gazelle intensity being carried a little bit too far. So I think acknowledging which baby step you're on and mm -hmm. saying we're no longer in that tense, you know, gazelle intense mode, we're now in a stage where we can be putting things where they should be. Right. And I think if you're, if you have years, I mean, a lot of people have years worth of debt to work through, you know, if, I mean, two professionals coming into a marriage, you might each be bringing, you know, fifty to a hundred thousand dollars worth of student loan debt. Right. I mean, this is years, so it's it's really not realistic that you're never going to go out to dinner. You're never going to have coffee. I mean, it's the ideal. It's what Dave recommends, but I also think that you know, you have to maybe set really tough goals, but reward yourselves as a couple. Not reward yourselves with trips and things, right? But just little things along the way. Take a win from time to time. Yeah, Take even if it's a free activity that you do as a couple, I think you need to celebrate your wins and encourage each other, right? Like pat yeah. each other on the back, like yeah. be I was your. Just say be say your it out loud. Yeah. So just say it out loud. That's 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 a start. You know, just yeah. the, Hey, we did a good job this month or this quarter. Mm -hmm. So, how do you think budgeting can affect a marriage? Do you think? If a marriage is a little rocky and someone says like, hey, let's start doing this, do you think that's a good thing? Do you think it could be a good thing? Or what is, what is your opinion on budgeting and marriage? I, I think it's good because, again, it supports, you know, if you have a really great vision of what this marriage could be, and I think we've, we've talked from very early days about just 
the, the joke is hopes and dreams. You know, if you have, you have an idea of what the hopes and dreams are, then budgeting is a natural way to say, okay, then how do we get there? You know, because it's easy for it all to be frittered away or, or just you wake up one day and say, well, you know, we have an extra car or the house is bigger than we want or there's just stuff. Um, but if you're budgeting and thinking about how is every dollar going and are we, if, if we can afford to, can we set aside money for the things that are really going to be meaningful for our family, then I think budgeting can be really liberating and provide mm -hmm. a lot of freedom. So. Um, I think it's I think it's a very healthy. I thing. think that's the key word. And Dave Ramsey always talks about freedom, debt freedom. But it really is if if your spouse is not on board, I think the one thing that is is really hard to explain until you're there is the freedom that comes from budgeting. You know, like mm -hmm. we were just saying to our kids the other day, there are rules, and your budget is your rule or your guideline that you're gonna follow, and that keeps people on the road safe. It keeps our kids in their school safe. Like, right. And it, it does kind of, it keeps your money on a path, and it, I think your marriage kind of goes with it. You yes. know, like, and when you do celebrate and you do go on vacations, there is nothing better than sitting on a beach knowing mm. that it is all paid for that you're gonna go home and you're not gonna take all the debt with you when you go home. You know, like it's, that you're only bringing home pictures and memories, no debt. Yeah, and, and you know what's it's interesting you say, and I think it, it gives you a common language as a couple to talk, mm -hmm. because so many couples actually don't talk about money at all. That's one of the reasons they get into debt in the first place, is we, we don't talk about this, we don't know what the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing, and if you get too far along there, you don't have a common language, and budgeting gives you a common language to speak between each other. Mm-hmm. That's true. Um, I just love, do you love it? I do, and, and I think, I, I always think it's fortunate that, that we discovered that, and I'm glad you're, you're talking about this, because the more, and we, we've been through the, a lot of ebbs and flows, job changes, and, and you know, career path, and, and all, all sorts of things that have caused us to Loosen the belt, tighten the belt, loosen the belt, tighten the belt. But I think finding this methodology has given us really good grounds for the future. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Do you have any parting words for our for our guests that we've invited to our fireside chat? I didn't know it was going to be a fireside chat, but this is where he was when I said, it's time to film. So here we are. Lights, camera, action. Um, Do you have any parting words for couples out there that are just getting started or why they should even bother? Like maybe good enough is good enough and they're happy being normal. Why should you upset that apple cart? Yeah, fine, fine. Being fine can be challenging because it's good until it's not. And I think a lot of people we've found don't address some of their financial concerns or have these conversations out of fear. They're fearful of addressing it. They don't know how to talk to their spouse about it. I think starting with, um, you know, reading Dave Ramsey's books, starting to talk about budgeting, or even at the very base level, start talking about hopes and dreams. Like, what are we mm -hmm. trying to accomplish and broach that? It makes things less fearful and, and you realize you're not alone and mm -hmm. this is a very common thing and it can be done. And once you start realizing it can be done, the fear just starts to go away. Right. If you're trying to get your spouse on board, I one of the best pieces of advice I can give you is the old saying, you catch more flies with honey. Don't you think yeah. that if you mm -hmm. go into this with um, good intentions and you know, you're kind about it right. and you do what you said, like, hey, let's read this book together. Or, hey, this is what we hope for, for my future. Mm -hmm. Let, let's work towards this. Or what do you want? Have a sit down fireside chat, you know, mm -hmm. don't make it a fight right off the beginning. Um, I think just be kind, be respectful of where your spouse might be coming from. Like Dennis said, you know, you're, you're both bringing your financial baggage to your marriage. So be mindful that, you know, you're not both coming from the same exact place, but you could have the same exact future if you get on the path together to budgeting. Yeah. All right. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you. I'll see you next Monday. Take care.